All right, now the fun begins. We're still in section one, 6.1. We learned about what the word inverse means and how to do it with our calculator. We've talked about why the calculator spits out an angle based on principal values, so I left this up here. But now comes the fun. It's going to say, evaluate each of these expressions, no calculator. No calculator. So, here we go. First of all, if you look, I'm using the word arc, or I'm using the negative 1. That means to do an inverse. Inverse means I give you the number, you give me the angle. Fair? Good. All right. If we're not allowed to use a calculator, we have to rely on our buddies, our references we've been studying all semester. So I'm going to put up here my unit circle, my friend. And then I'm going to draw my special right triangles. So again, we have to have this all memorized for the final exam. One of the first things I'm going to ask you all to do when you get your final exam packet from me is there's a sheet and it says draw your unit circle. Draw your 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles because you need that in front of you. Okay? So here's my 30. Here's my 45. Here's my 60. Okay? This information is memorized. You're, you, I'm not giving it to you. You have to know this. So, when I write theta equals arc tan of 1, first thing, in this textbook with this publisher, if they use theta, they want the angle measurement in degrees. So that's good. So I know all these examples. They want us to find theta, which is an angle. They want every answer in degrees. If this number is positive, we understand the answer is going to be in quadrant 1. First thing, when you evaluate a trig inverse, if that number is positive, all the angle measurements are given in quadrant 1. Now, how do you find the angle if you know the tangent value is 1? Well, first of all, it's based on definition. Tangent is y over x. So the question is, which of these references, if I do y over x, do I get an answer of 1? It's not the unit circle, like most people think. Because if you take y, 0, and divide it by 1, you get 0. Or if you take y, 1, and divide it by 0, you get undefined. So you're never going to get a tangent value of 1 off the unit circle. So most people would guess it's got to be the 45, because if you put your finger on 45, y over x is 1 over 1. And that's your answer, guys. 45 degrees. That's the angle that if you do the tangent of y over x, you get out 1. Okay? C. I'm saying arc cosine squared of 2 over 2. First of all, we're doing cosine. Okay? What's the definition of cosine? It's x over r. Our number behind is positive, so we know our answer is going to be in quadrant 1. This one's a giveaway. Where's the only reference where you would get a square root of 2 over 2? That's correct, the 45. Because you put your finger on the 45 and you do x over r, you get 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 over 2. So this answer is 45 degrees. Okay? Arc secant, 2 square roots of 3 over 3. Again, this number is positive, which means my angle measurement is going to be in quadrant 1. The only place we're going to get a square root of 3 is either off the 30 degree triangle or the 60. Now, it matters which one it is. So, what is our definition of secant? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. If cosine is x over r, we know this is r over x. So, if I go to 30, and I do r over x, I get 2 over square root of 3, which is this. So I know my angle is 30 degrees. Just to prove to you it can't be 60. If I put my finger on 60 and I do r over x, I would get 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, so we are doing an inverse just without a calculator. I'm giving you the number, you're getting me the angle. Everybody's good? Now let's have the fun. I'm doing arc sine. What's the first thing you notice? The number's what? Negative. If this number is negative, will the angle you give me be in quadrant 1? No, it will not. So now we've got to understand what quadrant are we in. 
because sine can be negative in three or four. This is your memorized part. For sine inverse, if you're giving me the angle measurement, it's got to be between zero and negative 90, which means it's got to be in quadrant four. That's the first thing. If you're doing the inverse of sine and I give you a negative number, your angle's got to be in quadrant four. Okay. There's no negative numbers on the triangle. We know we're not going to get a negative a half off the unit circle. The only thing you get off the unit circles are ones, negative ones, or zeros. So you're going to say, well, I can't look that up. Yes, you can. What you're going to do is use the reference. Forget the negatives there. You can look up the sine of a half, right? Which triangle will give you the sine of a half? Well, sine is y over r. Well, the only triangle that has a 1 and a 2 is either 30 or 60. So again, if I put my finger on the 30 and I do y over r, y over r, that gives me a half. So I know the reference angle was 30 degrees. I know that can't be the answer because that half is not positive. It's what? It's negative. So I can't use that angle, but it's my reference. If I know the angle is 30, how do I get the angle in quadrant 4? Well, I learned from the beginning of the semester my reference angle rules, right? If you remember from the beginning of the semester, you learn your rules. 180 minus theta, theta minus 180, 360 minus theta. I know all this information that's memorized, all chapter 1. If I know my reference angle is 30, then my angle in quadrant 4 would be 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. And that makes sense. If you drew a 330 degree angle, your terminal ray would land in quadrant 4, your sine value would be negative. But you know what? That's not acceptable either. Because walk over to the principal values. The principal values for sine inverse, tangent inverse, and cosecant inverse say between positive 90 to negative 90. They don't want a positive angle that's 360. Three, I mean 330. 330 doesn't fit between 90 and negative 90. So here's the catch. When you're doing an angle measurement, when you're doing an inverse, for sine inverse, tangent inverse, or cosecant inverse, and you need the angle in quadrant 4, you don't want it between 270 and 360. You want to keep the angle negative because it's got to be between 0 and negative 90. So guys, we talked about this. If the reference angle was 30, that means in quadrant 4, it's really a negative 30. Now think about that. In quadrant 4, the angle was 330 degrees. I would go from here, the initial ray, all the way counterclockwise, and I'd make a 330 degree angle. Do you agree? Going forwards 330 degrees is the same thing as going back 30 degrees. Do you all agree with that? So here we go. I'm doing it in inverse. Inverse means give me an angle. I know if this was a positive number, the angle would be in quadrant one, and the sine of 30 degrees is a half. So if we were in quadrant one, if this was positive, the answer would have been 30. But because it's negative, according to the principal values, I have to give the angle in quadrant four, and it has to be given as a negative angle. So if the reference angle is 30, the angle in quadrant 4 is going back 30. They will only accept this answer as negative 30 degrees. And that's going to be the hard part. And you can't have a calculator. You've got to know that. All right. The next one, cotangent inverse negative 1. All right. Again, I'm doing the inverse of cotangent. I'm giving you a number. I want an angle. I'm looking at this and I'm going, oh gosh, this number is not positive. What is it? It's negative. If that number is negative, it means the triangle is not in quadrant one. So for cotangent, we need to memorize. What are the principal values? Well, for cotangent, the principal values go from 0 to 180. 0 to 180 is quadrant one and quadrant two. So if this number is negative, I need to be in quadrant two for cotangent. And does that only work for cotangent? It works for secant, and it works for cosine. So if I have a negative number for cosine inverse, secant inverse, or cotangent inverse, my angle's got to be in quadrant two. So 
let's pretend the negative is not there. Let's find the cotangent value of 1. Well, we know our definition of cotangent is x over y. There's no way to take the x's and y's on the unit circle and divide them to get out a negative 1. Because if you divide anything by 0, you either get 0 or undefined. So we know it's not off the unit circle. The only way to get a 1 would be the 45. You put your finger on 45 and you do x over y, you would get 1. That is our reference angle. We know the answer can't be 45 degrees because we have a negative number. And you just told me for the cotangent inverse, negative means the angle's got to be in quad 2. So how do you get the angle in quadrant 2 if you know the reference angle's 45? You do 180 minus 45, and that gives you 135 degrees. And that would be your answer. Okay? So it's not hard to do a trig inverse if the number's positive. Because that's easy. The angles will always be in quadrant 1. It's difficult if you're doing a trig inverse and the number's negative, because then you've got to think what other quadrant you're going to be in. All right, the last one. Arc sine 2. <gasps> Breathe easy. The number's positive, which means the angle measurement should be in quadrant 1. Good. We're doing arc sine. Well, the definition of sine is y over r. There's no way you could divide y and r on the unit circle and get a 2. So now we start. Put my finger on 30. If I do y over r, that would be 1 over 2. That's 1 half. That don't work. Put my finger on 45. If I do y over r, I get 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2 is square root of 2 over 2. Not that. If I put my finger on 60, y over r is square root of 3 over 2, which is square root of 3 over 2. So there's no reference here that can give me an angle measurement. Now I know what you're thinking, I need my calculator. No, you don't, because you've got to think for a minute. We're going backwards. I'm giving you a number, and I want the angle. Everybody think about graphing. When we graph sine, what was the highest number sine could have? 1. What's the lowest number sine could have? Negative 1, correct? A normal sine curve goes between 1 and negative 1. That means its highest number is always going to be 1. Its lowest number is always going to be negative 1. Can sine ever have a number bigger than 1? No. So this guy, even if you type in your calculator, your calculator's going to come back and say to you, hey, silly, you can't do it. This is not possible. Now, don't be throwing me words and using them incorrectly. Don't you dare say the word undefined, because it's not undefined. Undefined means you divided by 0. We did no dividing by 0. Don't say the word no solution. You only use the word no solution when we solve an equation. We didn't solve an equation. Don't be throwing out the word imaginary. Imaginary is when you do a square root of a negative number. We didn't do any square rooting. I'm very, very, very adamant that you use vocabulary correctly. Those words are very specific to specific situations. You can't use any of those terminology words here. I cannot do this. It's not possible. The sine value can't be bigger than 1, therefore there's no angle. If you wrote me no angle exists, I would take that. Okay? Or not possible. Okay. Now that was great, but now let's step it up a notch. Okay? Who says the angle measurement always has to be given in degrees? So let's go to a couple more examples in your notes. All right. Let's go to set four. It says find the exact value of each real number y. So now, guys, look at me. When they say they want the angle as a real number, they don't want it in degrees, they want it in what, y'all? Radians. Okay? So let's look at B and D for this one. All right. So we'll look at B and D. So, again, I'm giving you an inverse, which means I'm giving you a number I want at an angle. I'm looking at it here and I'm saying, oh my, cosine has a negative number behind it. If it's negative, will my angle be in quadrant 1? No. So what do we know? We have to memorize the principal values. For cosine, if I want a negative, if I want an angle, a negative, if I have a negative number and I want my angle, it have to be between 0 and 180, which puts me in quadrant 2. Okay. To look up the cosine value, what is your definition of cosine? 
Cosine is x over r. Okay, you all agree? All right. Can you go to the unit circle and divide x by, and by the radius and get out a negative 1? Well, let's think about that a minute. What is the radius of the unit circle? That's right, it's always 1. So we look at the unit circle and we're doing cosine. Does cosine have a value in negative 1? Sure it does. Cosine is your x value and right there is your negative 1. Do you all see that? So if we take x, which is negative 1, and we divide it by the radius 1, we would get negative 1. So this is coming off the unit circle. Our angle is 180 degrees. Okay, now you're going to say, what about the triangle? Well, think about the definition of cosine. If you do x over r for the 30, you get square root of 3 over 2. If for the 45, you do x over r, you get 1 over square root of 2. For the 60, you get 1 over 2. There's no way to use the right angles, the right triangles, to get an angle measurement. Now, the problem is they don't want the angle in degrees, so read your homework. If it says a real number, they want this in radians. We know 180 degrees is pi. So that's important. Pay attention. Let's do one more of these. D. Y equals cotangent inverse negative 1. So again, I get worried. I got a negative 1. That means the angle can't be in quadrant 1. According to the principal values for cotangent, your angle is between 0 and pi. 0 and 180, which is either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Okay? You all with me? So when I'm done, this angle better be in quadrant 2. All right. Now, again, what's the definition of cotangent? It's x over y. So first thing we do is go to the unit circle. Can we divide x and y and make a negative 1? Well, there's no way. Because if you take your coordinates, x divided by y is either undefined or x divided by y is 0. So we cannot get a negative 1 for cotangent off the unit circle. So the only way we can get a, a 1 is using the triangles. And it would have to be for 45 degrees because 45 degrees x over y would give us 1. But it can't be 45 degrees because you told me it was negative and the answer has to be in quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, what would the reference angle be? The reference angle would be 180 minus 45, which is 135 degrees. But do they want the answer in degrees? No. The homework said, give me the answer as a real number. That means the angle has to be in radians. We now have to change 135 to radians because we know 45 degrees, the reference angle, is pi over 4 in radians. And how many 45s make 135? Three of them. And that would be your final answer. So what we did right now, and I want to understand, is we can do, we can evaluate a trig inverse without using our calculator. When we evaluate a trig inverse without our calculator, it's still following the principal values. The principal values for cotangent are 0 to 180. That's between 0 and 180. The principal values for cosine are between 0 and 180. That's between 0 and 180. So that's what we need to understand. Why are we getting out the angle we're getting? Okay, we're going to stop here. We got one more thing to discuss in this section. I'll catch you in the last video.